ಶಕ್ತಿಪುತ್ರಮಕಲ್ಮಶಂಪರಾಶರಾತ್ಮಜಮಂದೇಶಕದಾದಂದೋಹನಿಥಿಂ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ್ಯ ನರಂಜೀವನರೋತ್ತಮೀವೀ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸಂ ತದೋ ಜೇವಧೀರೇತ್ ಸೊ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೆಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಮೆಸೇಜ್ ಅಟ್ ಗುರು ಅಸೆಂಬ್ಲಿ ಅಡ್ರೆಸ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಧೃತರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ಹಿ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಸ್ಪೀಚ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಾಸ್ ವೇಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡೆನ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಅಲಾನಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಧರ್ಮಾರ್ಥ uh what is good for kauravas what is good for uh uh pandavas and he said that dhritarashtra as a king as a father he should give up give the king pandavas their share of uh kingdom and if he does that and it is his responsibility to convince duryodhana and krishna said promises that he will convince pandavas about their stopping this war and accepting whatever that dhritarashtra gives them he will do that right so that speech of krishna everyone agreed to but nobody was dared to dared to speak up and say that that's a great thing and that's what dhritarashtra should do because everybody all the assembled kings were afraid of duryodhana so hearing that those words of krishna so everybody was standing there or, or sitting there listening to that and then it became very silent and then parashurama started uh, addressing duryodhana he said listen to my words uh, which i will give you with an example and that speech i'm going to make is is going to be good for you and parashurama then narrates a story of a king named dambodbhava so this king was ruling entire earth and he was such a strong king that he used to pass at uh, is used to wake up early in the morning and night everything he used to pass all the times and he used to call brahmana kshatriyas and ask them uh, and he used to tell them not whether he is be a shudra or a vaishya kshatriya or a brahmana is there anyone superior or equal to me in battle so he used to ask everybody and go and proclaim and declare himself that uh, is there anybody equal to me is there anybody superior to me in in battle field so like this he used to wander entire earth uh, intoxicated with his pride he used to go and ask all the brahmanas and things like that and many brahmanas uh, used to tell him that don't do this because you will this pride is not good so don't do this but the king never listened to them and once he was going like this one very learned brahmana with uh, as merits and he had all the proofs with vedas and everything he had understood everything and became very angry with this king's question because a sekshatriya he should be respecting brahmana was he was going asking is anybody superior to me and that brahmana became very angry and he told him that there are two people who are more who are foremost of all the men and who are always victorious in battle you will no no you will by no means equal to them okay if you seek to battle with them go and ask them with any one of them you have a battle and then king asks them where are these two heroes you mentioned in which race they are born what are their achievements who are they and all those things and the brahmana tells him that it has been heard by that these two persons are ascetics nara and narayana they both have taken their births in the race of human beings and go and you go and fight them 
it is that those nara and narayana who always practice severe penances they are in the gandamadana mountain you go and see them hearing this dambodhava proudly immediately takes a large army of all types of uh, so foot soldiers enemy elephants horses chariot riders and everything he takes all types of uh, army and then he goes there because he did somebody challenged him right somebody told him that there is somebody else superior than him so he that's why he went ahead and he went to gandamadana and when he goes there he sees those rishis who were very thin by doing penances and things with uh because of the hunger and thirst they went through and the, all their body veins and everything was visible in their body they were so thin and weak in suffering from the cold winds and sun and everything so after touching their feet and uh, inquiring their welfare and everything he worships them uh, those rishis and then one of the rishis received them with seat and offering water and everything else and then after that they inquired uh king's business why i have come here and let it happen whatever is the reason you have come let it happen tell us then the king says that the whole earth whole earth has been conquered by me by this my arms uh, strong arms i have conquered everything and all my enemies have been killed but desiring to battle with you both i have come here to this mountain and offer me that opportunity of battling with having a battle with you and when he addressed narayana narayana like that they said anger covetness those things have no place in this retreat in this gandamadara mountain and you can have a bat you can uh have a battle uh, that's why battle is not at all is possible here there are no weapons here nothing unrighteousness or malice that takes place here that's why if you really want to have a battle go and have somewhere else um and also the, because there are many kshatriyas on the earth go and have battle with them even though narayana narayana try to convince him and say that don't you can ask for this battle don't ask for this he kept saying that i want to have a battle the king did not listen so he kept asking um, still did, wanting that battle they repeatedly asked and challenged rishis for the fight then nara took a handful of grass blades darba grass in his hand and says you want battle with us then fight take up all your arms and troops and be ready i will punish you because of this and them both both then if that's the case if you think your weapon what you are holding in your hand is fit for you then let's have the fight so i will use my weapons and you use whatever the weapon you think you have you fight that then dambodbo with all is immediately with his troops and everybody started uh, releasing arrows towards nara and nara immediately those darba grass he was holding in his hand he with uh, mantras he released those darba grass towards dambodbo and his army immediately each of those grass blades turned into hundreds and thousands of arrows and they started piercing and dismantling dambodbo's army injuring in all places of body ears eyes noses everything cut off from those army men they all started running away and seeing this dambodbo realizes that he made a mistake uh, immediately he asks for rishi's protection then nara stops those arrows and then says that you always uh, be obedient to brahmanas and be victorious never do such things uh, again again you can you always conquer your uh, enemies as that's as your chatriya duty but you should never uh, within your heart set this kind of pride and everything because filled once one is filled with if you filled with filled with pride you should never insult anybody on any occasions whether they are superior or inferior to you, never insult even 
such a conduct is good for you so that's why acquiring wisdom abandoning this covetousness and pride controlling your soul restraining your passion and practicing forgiveness and humility and becoming amiable to uh, everybody and cherishing your subjects go and live and without again nara tells him that uh, without ascertaining the strength and weakness of men never insult anybody under any circumstances and then he blesses him and sends him away so parashurama narrating this story he tells duryodhana that the king then dambodhva worshiping the narayana narayana after worshiping them he returns to his city and from that point he practiced uh, righteousness so that rishi narayan narayana were uh, the feat the achievement of that rishi narayan narayana is great and so again narayana among them narayana is superior to nara in consequence of many qualities he has so that's why there are these weapons called uh, kakudika shuka naka akshi akshi sam tarjana samtana santana nartana ghora asya modaka all these are placed in that naras uh, bow and that nara and uh, this is currently that's those are all available on gandhi way as well so that's all go to arjuna and these weapons when they are stuck they men always yield up their lives they always die and they, and then those weapons having uh, other means of corresponding with eight passions so they are like lust anger covetousness vanity insolence pride malice and selfishness so these are the ones that destroy uh, those people having those things will be destroyed through these weapons and once those weapons are released people are confounded and they move frantically deprived of their senses and under the influence of these weapons people always sleep heavily or cut uh lose they vomit they pass urine or excreta or weep laugh or become kind of mad people and things like that so they lose completely so parashurama then explains that indeed this arjuna is irres- irresistible in fight and he has narayana for his friend and that narayana is the creator and he is the bhagavan of all the worlds and he is the uh, f- one who is fully acquainted with the course of everything so who is there to in the world to venture against and defeat those uh, defeat defeat jishnu in this battle so he says that again countless virtues reside in arjuna janardana again is superior to him so just as previously said narayana is superior to nara krishna is superior to arjuna but arjuna himself is nobody is able to defeat him so why you are going in this so you parashurama tells duryodhana that you already know how good arjuna is and they those were who were narayana narayana in the previous days they are now arjuna and keshava that's why you know those uh, people who are so again uh, if you believe in this and do not if you do not mistrust me whatever i'm saying you think of oh, parashurama is just making up stories if you don't think like that then give make peace with pandavas it is good for you and this union in the family is not good so that's why make peace but if you disregard whatever i'm saying then you will pay for the for that so at hearing this parashurama concludes then having listened to that then rishi kanwa makes this uh, statements to duryodhana in that assembly he says that uh, brahma is indestructible and eternal again those rishis narayan narayana are of the same character and among all the sons of aditi the adityas among all those adityas vishnu alone is eternal and he is alone is unconquerable he is indestructible and existing forever 
and he is the lord of everything and he is the possessor of all the divine quality qualities all others such as moon earth water wind fire sky planet stars whatever that is we see it, everything mountains rivers whatever everything all this are liable to destruction but vishnu alone is indestructible and all these things when the universe comes to an end takes leave of all these things leave they are all destroyed and created again and again again such as men animals birds creatures everything all this right anything that moves or does not move anything that is available all this anything that moves has a short life right so he says that again all, all these kings all of them that have enjoyed great prosperity and everything at last when the time comes all of them are destroyed and then they they are reborn again in order to enjoy the fruits of the good work they have done in the previous lives that's why you make peace with yudhishthira let pandavas and kauravas both rule the earth happily he tells that one should not think that i am strong because it is seen as there is there are always persons stronger than what one thinks so if, again physical strength is not always the greatest strength because the, those people who are they really think uh, no they think that physical strength alone is not um, the greatest strength pandavas they have all the prowess equal to devatas and also they are regarded as strong so kanva says that in this regard i will tell you a story uh, because again physical strength in relation to physical strength alone is not uh, great uh, is the regard uh, should not be regarded as the strength by all the people those who know things in this regard i'm going to tell you a story of matali uh, searching for a bridegroom to give his daughter to uh, his daughter away so kanva starts this story narration so indra's charioter matali uh, who uh, was dearly loved by indra and for him a daughter was born and she was uh, celebrated uh, by everybody for her beauty she was such a beautiful daughter uh, with that celestial beauty uh, the matali's daughter was named as gunakeshi and she was both in loveliness and symmetry of her body figure there was nobody equal to her in the females uh, sex so again uh, then when she grew up matali was started thinking about became very anxious and he wanted to marry her uh, off and give her to a good um, man so but that's where he started become very anxious and thinking what to do next and he thought to himself uh, birth of daughters in the families of those that are well behaved and high born and possessed of reputation and humility of character is always attended with evil results so again uh, he says that daughters when born in respective family always endanger the honor of three families the maternal one the paternal one and the family in which they are adopted by marriage so again he thinks that looking at uh, the worlds of devatas men i have searched both but i don't find anybody eligible as a bridegroom for my daughter so again here he is saying daughter having a birth of daughter uh, gives at uh, evil results and it is uh, endangers the three families right so what what he means is if the daughter is not married off to a good family it brings disrepute to father side mother side and also wherever she later on goes right and because giving away daughter at the right time is duty of the father so that if that's not done that brings disreputation to father okay and father and mother side it brings the family it, it brings the disreputation but on the other hand the daughter going in there she again if you look at this from the other angle she brings fame 
and respect and all the things to three families her father's side mother's side and the home she adopted after marriage all these things she brings this uh, reputation and fame and everything she brings that by uh, by uh, again well behaved and uh, high born uh, that such lay, lay girls they bring that so matale thinking that there are uh, nobody among devatas and men on earth who is uh, eligible for his uh, to become his son in law uh, he again it's happened that devatas daityas gandharvas men rishis none of them he looked and thought no not good not good for my son not good for my daughter okay to become my son in law so after searching for so long and then he held a consultation with one night with his wife sudharma and matali set upon uh, thing thought that he is going to go to nagas world he looked at devatas daityas gandharvas rishis men and everywhere then he thought i will go and see whether there is anybody among nagas who is eligible for my daughter and he told sudharma that i looked everywhere but i found nobody uh, for gunakeshi so i may be able to find somebody among nagas nagas so i will go and search and he says that and then he takes we uh, says goodbye to his wife and blesses his daughter gunakeshi and then he starts his journey towards patal so uh, as he was going on his way narada comes across to him and uh, narada was on his way to go and see varuna so seeing matali narada asks where are you going on anything for your own you are going this direction or is it for indra you are going in this direction what 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 is the reason what what's the task you are going and when narada asks this matali explains him everything saying that yeah i'm looking for a son in law pride groom for my daughter gunageshi i searched everywhere among devatas daityas gandharvas rishis men all the places i can't could not find anyone suitable so i'm heading to see if anybody is there among nagas who is fit for my daughter who is who i consider as eligible to become my uh, who son in law and who could become the pride groom so hey listening to this narada says that we will go together because uh, again i'm going that direction only to see varuna so i'm go- going there so let's go together and we will select a good bride groom for your uh, daughter gunakish so having said that they go to patal and then there uh, matale narada they so Uh, varuna there and varunarada was received with worship due for a devrashi and matali also received with equal of what is received for indra what offer what respect would give give be given to indra same respect was given to uh, matali as well both of them uh, informed nara varuna of their purpose of planning and after uh, having Uh, meet up with varuna discussing few other things just general casually they started their journey towards nagas region and narada who knew all these places and the residents and everything in that region started describing one after another as he they traveled he started describing everything narada said look here this uh, you have seen varuna surrounded by his sons grandsons and everything his dominion is is of this he is the uh, this is the varuna's adob it is uh, very delightful all around full of riches uh, the sun uh, endued with great wisdom of varuna uh, is even much distinguished for his conduct and dispositions and his holiness and possessed of lotus like eyes his name is pushkara so varuna's son he introduces pushkara there and and he is the varuna's much loved son and uh, again with great beauty and uh, delightful to see and then he has taken 
Chandra's daughter as uh, uh, his wife. Pushkar has taken uh, Soma's daughter as uh, his wife. And that daughter of Soma, again, is equal to beauty, like Lakshmi herself, and is called Josnakali. And so, again, so he Narada mentions here that she once had chosen um, Aditi's eldest son as her lord, but then she married Pushkara after that. Then he Narada says that look here, the adobe made of entirely the house made of entirely of uh, gold, which is full of wine called Warani. And and again, indeed, uh, when this Warani came, is is when the devatas and uh, acquired their goddess when they became the devatas right so after the uh, when they defeated the daityas in the in the battle and when they took control of heaven and everything then that's when they obtained this and this wine called varni and they obtained so again uh, he says that in the olden days here many tribes of rakshasas and daityas uh, Many kind, they were residing here with many celestial weapons, but they all were defeated by Devatas. And see their Varuna's lake, that firing like a blazing flames, and that discus of Vishnu surrounded by uh, splendor uh, here. And also he says, there lies the bow uh, that is created for the destruction of the world. So it is always protected with great vigilance by the Devatas. And it is that from this bow that Arjuna has, uh, Arjuna has taken its name. So that's the, again, the great Gandiva bow that's, that's there and, and that's there. So, and then again, and the, this, this bow is, has strength of thousand bows and its power it assumes at the hour of battle, uh, it, it is very great. Again, it punishes all punishable wicked kings and run. So, Again, he explains that the weapon that's created by, first created by Brahma uh, itself is, is there and he shows that weapon. And then he shows, the, he, he says that Shukracharya himself has said that this weapon is terrible uh, in, in respect of all the kings and that he shows that weapon as well. And then he shows Varuna's umbrella and that umbrella, from that umbrella, the water was dropping. So pure water was dropping. Uh, and from that water, even drinking that water has that uh, option. The, 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 the drinking that water, they feel, uh, again, it, it, it is, uh, they feel like it, it is the best thing and refreshing thing. So, so from there, Narada again continues that here at the very center of this world of Nagas is situated a city called Patala and uh, celebrated all over the universities, worshipped by Daityas and Dhanavas, creatures living here, uh, innovating in the earth, if brought here by force of the water current, they shriek loudly uh, because of the fear. And then again, here also a fire named Asuragni or Vadabagni and which is fed by the water. And it is uh, living here continuously, births here. And so again, uh, held fast by the flat of uh, celestials, it moves, it doesn't move regarding light itself as bound and confined in this sense. So Vadavagni, we briefly touched in Vanaparva, right? So when we are looking at uh, Skanda's birth and before that we were looking at different types of Agnis, whatever Agni uh, was mentioned. Whatever Agni story again uh, came as well in Adiparva as well, when Brugus were, Brugu, all the uh, Brahmanas from Brugu's race were being killed by Kshatriyas. At that time, uh, one Brahmin lady, she took her uh, womb, and, and she kept the baby in her thighs, right? And through breaking through the thighs, a boy came through and called Arva. And from his anger, the fire created. And that's what Agni, that fire was later put in the ocean. And that became known as Vodavagni, right? But also 
vadavagni as as another story as well and this is different in, in multiple puranas is mentioned so durvasa as uh, we know is is uh, all the devatas deposited their weapons with durvasa while they were doing some sacrifice and things and after some time so durvasa was keeping all those weapons but he could not move from one place to another holding all those weapons so what he did was he grinded all those weapons and drank that so after some time devatas indra and others came and said we need these weapons because now we have to fight daityas right so daityas and daravas so as far as we have to fight at that time durvasa says i was protecting i could not carry so i drank everything so then indra says what to do now then durvasa suggests him that i will give uh, you make weapons out of my bone indra says i can't kill you so because you are a brahmana but then durvasa gives up his own life right so and through after his death uh, there are stories of surabi coming and uh, making uh, him purification and things like that so from his we looked at all this in the uh, earlier chapters in vanaparva and also in early in, uh, yeah and mainly in vanaparva we looked at these stories right so from and also in early in udgaga parva as well so when vritras story came so we from durvasa's bone vajra ida and all the other weapons were made devata's weapons were made from that right so through that they killed vishurupa and then vritra and all the daityas were killed by indra using those weapons now durvasa's wife she had a child and that child was known as uh, pipalada in the skanda purana is mentioned as pipalada and he comes to know that durvasa was killed by devatas and he becomes very angry right so through that anger uh, a fire generated and that fire became known as uh, vadava agni and that agni was commanded by pipalada to kill all the devatas and entire world right so that fire was ready to destroy everything at that time indra and everybody became very worried they go to brahma and brahma goes to vishnu and then vishnu tells uh vadava agni that there are 33 crores of devatas how are you going to eat all of them and if you eat all of them in one go you probably will feel hungry tomorrow so don't do that eat one by one so vadava agni agrees that i will eat one by one but then indra again becomes worried how i'm going to survive because if we keep eating one by one everybody will destroy so then vind vishnu tells vadava agni that you start by finishing the water first so you want to destroy all the worlds and devatas and everybody first destroy the water drink all the water finish all the water then you will start it okay so where do i start so vishnu says vadava uh, agni tells vadava agni that uh, and uh, he wish to instruct saraswati river saraswati take him to ocean so that's where was saraswati from there she vishnu asks all the other rivers they say they can't take this uh, river and then saraswati agrees saraswati takes him to the ocean and then whatever at that time becomes very happy that she carried him to the ocean so t- when whatava at that time became very pleased with saraswati and says i'm very pleased with your service bringing me to this water tell me what boon i can give and then saraswati at that time thinks of vishnu what should i ask and vishnu tells whatava agni that your mouth you became a needle type mouth so you drink through like a needle okay don't with a heavy large mouth but through a needle like small point you drink the water and with that saraswati asked that and vadava agni uh, vadava agni agrees to that and then he starts drinking the ocean water through a needle okay so there is so much water 
Vishnu thought that he's never going to finish it, right? But also, still Sagara becomes very worried and Vishnu grants a boon to Vasagara that your water should never end. So you, whatever the water you reduce, still it gets added to that. So all the stories come like this. So then that becomes the Vadava Agni as per his dude. This is what mentioned here, right? So Vadava, which is fed by water. Okay, so when Narada explains that Vadava Agni is here, it is fed by water. So that's what it means. So that Vadava, through like a needle-like mouth, a small, tiny mouth, drinking, trying to finish the water in the ocean, that's what it's doing. So, but also Purana says that at the end of the world, when the Pralaya happens, this Vadava Agni destroys everything, right? So this is the Agni that's the one that's going to destroy and burn all the worlds, okay, including Devatas and everything. So that's what it does. So that's the background to this Vadava Agni, which is fed by uh, water main. So it went uh, outside the Mahabharata story here, but linked one. So again, Narada continues that it is here that Devatas first destroyed and uh, defeated uh, their enemies and they drank Amrita at this time and deposited the uh, remaining Amrita here. And it is from this place that uh, moon uh, rises, winds and waxes. And also it is from here, Aditi's sons, uh, Aditi's son, uh, uh, Hayagriva, which in the form of Hayagriva, he restored the Vedas and everything. And it is, and again, recurrence of the very auspicious occasion rises and he uh, restored the Vedas. And that's why it's called um, uh, Suvarna. And then that, that uh, special time is called Suvarna. And again, I, the water here, because all the water forms, uh, such as moon and other things, everything, all that uh, their water is in this region or falls on this region. That's why this region is called Patala. Patauti Jalam Shravanti Pathalam. So the Jalam, water from everywhere drops into this place. That's why it's called Patala. And from here again, the elephant called Airavata uh, takes the cool water from here and the Airavata pours that water in the clouds, which Indra uses to pour as rain to earth. Okay. So again, from uh, there again, a lot of aquatic animals and various species, everything is there. And all those things are living in this place. Uh, so again, uh, Dhanavas, they live here, confined here in this place. And they... Uh, always waiting for that time when they can again take control and defeat Indra. So they wait for that that opportunity. And it is in this place again, Shiva himself practiced the severest penance previously. And also here, many rishis uh, live here by the name, uh, by the woe called Go. Uh, and they hold their pranavayu in that and they, the vrata, they observe vrata called Go. And also here also uh, an elephant uh, elephant race called uh, Supratika. Uh, from that elephant race, um, these elephants were born called Airavata, Vamana, Kumuda, Anjana. These are all born. First again, Airavata became the king of those elephants uh, among, uh, on that, in that tribe. So Narada, like this, starts explaining one after another. So he says, as he walks along in that Varunas, uh, in that Patala, he starts explaining uh, as their journey towards Nagas. We will stop there and where Narada heads next and how Matali finds.